All set? All right, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, before we start, I just want to acknowledge our uh, law enforcement partners joining us here today. Bill Sweeney, Assistant Director in Charge of the New York FBI Office. Ashan Benedict, Special Agent in Charge of ATF's uh, New York Field Division. And uh, Philip Bartlett, Inspector in Charge of the U.S. Postal Inspection Services New York Division. And in a moment, you'll hear from Mayor de Blasio, then you're going to hear from Bill, and then uh, from John Miller. And John will provide you with an update on the suspicious package investigations we're conducting here in New York City. First and foremost, my message today is that New Yorkers are safe. There are no current credible threats to any individuals, organizations, or locations here in New York City. New Yorkers are safe, but everyone, all 8.6 million residents and the millions of visitors who come here every year should always remain vigilant and aware of their surroundings. As always, I urge people to alert us to anything that might seem strange or out of place or anything that makes them feel uncomfortable. They can flag down a cop, call 911, or call our toll-free counterterrorism number, which is 1-888-NEW-YORK-CITY-SAFE. And that's for anything new or if someone has information about any of the incidents this week in New York. We don't us underestimate the difference even one person can make towards our collective safety and neither should the people of New York City. I want to reiterate, as I did yesterday, and as I do any time we talk about far-reaching investigations of this nature or of any other kind, that nothing we do in law enforcement, we do alone. Through our Joint Terrorist Task Force, comprised of professionals from the agencies you see here today and others, we are investigating all of this with great precision. And I can say with certainty that we will identify and arrest a person or people responsible for these acts. Make no mistake, New York City's intelligence and counterterrorism counter capabilities are second to none. Every day of the year, not just this week, our detectives and analysts are constantly pouring over the threat stream as we proactively deploy our resources around the city as needed. And you're seeing that today, too, out of an abundance of caution. I'll tell you that when we look at the events of yesterday and today, I have immense pride in the incredible work the men and women of the NYPD do each and every day, especially when it involves partnering with the organizations represented here today. I'll conclude by reminding everyone that law enforcement professionals do not care about the politics behind these acts. What we do care about is keeping the public we serve safe. That's it. That's the job, fighting crime and keeping people safe. And through the full and willing partnership of everyone who lives in, works in, and visits New York City, will make the safest large city in the United States even safer. Mr. Mayor. Thank you very, very much, Commissioner. I want to express my appreciation to all the men and women of the NYPD who have done an outstanding job uh, yesterday and today addressing this situation, and to all of our partners, federal and state partners, everyone has been working together uh, to address this forthrightly. Now, uh, look, one of the things that we emphasize in a moment like this is that you're going to see a lot of police presence. It's important that we proactively take steps to protect uh, those who have come under attack. Clearly, what we've seen in the last few days is an attack on media outlets, an attack on prominent uh, public figures. Uh, we're going to make sure there's expanded presence as long as we need it uh, to show very vividly uh, that New York City takes these issues seriously, that we are defending people who are coming under attack, that part of how we protect the democratic process is to show that threats like this are not taken lightly. So that expect that presence. And I know that for those who have gone through this uh, in the last few days, that's a presence that they appreciate greatly. I want to say that uh, everyday New Yorkers have responded to uh, this situation with the kind of strength and the kind of resiliency that this city is famous for. It makes me very, very proud of all 8.6 million New Yorkers that they have handled this situation uh, with a real sense of resolve. Uh, they're not going to let an act of terror intimidate them. And that's uh, really important in this moment to say whatever the motives of the individuals involved, uh, the people of this city are not being thrown off their game, are not having their values undermined or their way of life undermined. New Yorkers are standing strong right now. And the last thing I want to say is, you know, it, 
in a moment like this, there's a lot of concern, there's a lot of fear. Uh, clearly, it's an upsetting time. It's a time when there's been too much hatred and too much division in the air. And in that context, people can feel powerless. I want to remind people that everyone has an opportunity to play a positive and constructive role here. Uh, first of all, helping law enforcement. This is something that everyone can do. If you have any information at all that you think could help law enforcement to address the situation, share it with law enforcement immediately. Uh, let them be the judges of the value of the information. Don't hold it back. Uh, so many times, and I agree with the commissioner, law enforcement ultimately has proven they will find the perpetrators, but so many times it's because uh, an individual, a citizen, stepped forward with information that really led to the key breakthrough. If you have information, share it. If you're concerned about uh, packages that could arrive at your home or your workplace, you see something that worries you, reach out to the police, get uh, their involvement to address the situation. People can be part of solving this immediate challenge. But finally, we all can be a part of solving the bigger situation uh, that we're facing as a society, as a nation. A tone of civility, a tone of mutual respect is something we all can create. We shouldn't just ask what are the most prominent voices doing. We also have to ask the question, are all of us treating each other with respect? treating men and women in law enforcement respect, people in the media who report the news, treating them with respect. This is something uh, that we all have to do as a way of addressing a crisis like this, and we can, and I have great confidence that we will. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Jimmy. Right now, the FBI Joint Terrorism Task Forces around the nation are fully engaged on this investigation. We are working quickly to process and analyze relevant information from the suspicious packages recovered over the last few days. We will continue to do so for as long as it takes and until there is a resolution. This is a nationwide investigation involving multiple jurisdictions coast to coast. To give you a sense of scope, just here on the New York JTTF, agencies ranging from ATF, the US Postal Inspection Service, the Secret Service, the NYPD, the New York State Police, and dozens of other federal, state, and local agencies are working shoulder to shoulder. I want to thank those partners for their efforts, their collaboration, and hard work. Much of their leadership is in their room with us today. I also want to personally thank the hundreds of men and women that are up the street working on this together. The FBI will continue to focus all of the resources at our disposal to identify and apprehend the individual or individuals responsible for these acts. The investigation is still in its early stages. I have said this each time that we have faced similar situations, but it bears repeating today. It is vitally important that we do not inadvertently disclose information that could adversely impact our investigation or a future prosecution. The public understands the need for this level of operational security, and for that reason, I will not be able to answer specific questions on what we know. What I can say is that at various times over the last few days, 10 suspicious packages we're located at multiple locations in New York, Maryland, Florida, Delaware, and Los Angeles. Law enforcement responded, and each package was collected by experts, and examinations are now underway at the FBI lab in Quantico. As to the devices located in New York, which contained a powder, the initial analysis indicates that the powder in those particular envelopes did not present a biological threat. Other analysis is ongoing. However, it is worth repeating that any device could be considered potentially dangerous and treated as such until proven otherwise. We continue to advise the American public to remain vigilant as it does remain possible further packages have been or could be mailed. These devices should be considered dangerous. Report any specific package to law enforcement and it is worth repeating, do not touch, do not move, do not handle any suspicious or unknown package. Leave it to the law enforcement professionals. We are also asking the public to call us with any information you may have. We have set up a hotline nationwide. That hotline is 1-800-CALL-FBI. And we also have a link set up where you can provide information via the internet at tips.fbi.gov. We are actively investigating tips you have already provided. Please continue to assist us with our efforts. 
a moment of your time can make a great difference towards resolving this investigation. Thank you. I think most of you are up to speed on the events that occurred um, outside the Time Warner Center at CNN yesterday. Uh, what I'd like to do is kind of walk you through the timeline of the events of this morning on Greenwich Street. Uh, this begins in the very early hours of the morning when a retired NYPD Intelligence Bureau detective um, who was awake and watching the news uh, saw the image of the packaging that has been common to most of these devices uh, as they have turned up at various locations. And it struck him that that looked uh, very much like a package he had seen on Tuesday um, in mail he was to screen uh, for Robert De Niro Productions um, at their um, offices on Greenwich Street. He contacted, uh, based on his experience, he knew how to call the bomb squad directly. He spoke to the bomb squad. They advised him uh, to also notify the first precinct, um, and they went directly to the scene. They were met by emergency service, um, who with the first precinct were able to locate, based on the uh, security director's um, instructions, the package where he described it. Uh, the bomb squad was then able to uh, use their expertise and equipment to safely um, package that intact, uh, remove it safely from the building, and then place it in the total containment vessel, uh, which is our bomb uh, transport vehicle, and bring it to the Rodman's Neck range, where it joined um, the other devices that uh, we got from CNN um, and from uh, the FBI and Westchester County authorities. Uh, by late this afternoon, all of those devices should have been transported by the FBI to the FBI lo uh, lab in Quantico to be examined by their explosives people so that all the evidence um, from all of these incidents are in one place. Um, I'd especially like to commend the work of the JTTF. Uh, was in the command post last night um, as they pulled um, an amazing effort together with other joint terrorism task forces around the country to run leads. Um, and with FBI headquarters, the work of the Intelligence Bureau detectives uh, under Chief Galati, who have been uh, assisting as a virtual extension of the JTTF as, as leads come in, uh, the public for calling those leads in, not just to the FBI hotline, but um, to the NYC safe number that goes to our ops desk. Uh, we're up 139 percent in those calls, so when we ask people uh, to come forward, they do it. Uh, particularly to the bomb squad, um, uh, detectives and supervisors who, whether it's 1 o'clock in the afternoon or, or in this case, 5 o'clock in the morning, are right there uh, with the right equipment, the right training, and know what to do. Um, the emergency service people who drive that truck uh, with the device in the back, the highway people who escort them, um, and of course all of our partners, postal inspectors, ATF, um, and, uh, and of course the JTTF. It's a large team effort, and, um, and, and we're looking for um, the continued help of the public. All right, at this point, we're going to take some questions. Yep, second row. Uh, were these devices rigged to explode, or were they, do you think they were more sent to intimidate? So we're not going to, as uh, Bill said, we're not going to give you 100% accurate description of what the devices were, but we, treat, we have to treat them as, as uh, live devices. Uh, this is a protocol that our bomb squad people use and it keeps everybody safe. Yep, in the back row. Is there any reason to believe there may be other packages like this out there? Yeah, we, we don't know at this time, but uh, with the, the postal services that, that are here, uh, we're doing our best to make sure that if there are any out there, we identify them quickly. Yep, in the back. You said that the powder wasn't biological. Is it a talcum powder or some other type of powder? And also, are you exploding the bombs? at Rodman's Neck, or you're taking them to Quantico unexploded? No, the, uh, we are transporting uh, whatever evidence we have down to Quantico. And as far as uh, the powder, we're just going to leave it as to what Bill said, that it's not biological, and we're still testing it. Yes, in the back row. Uh, two questions. First of all, um, is it, I, I saw reports that they may have come from Florida, or any of them, have, have they been hand-delivered or delivered um, via courier, or were they sent through the mail? Could they have come from Florida? And then my second question is, what, in terms of being proactive and, and identifying potentially new targets, are you doing anything to, to look for other um, uh, so 
celebrities or yeah, okay. TV Bill, do you want to talk about uh, the first part of your question? And John, maybe you can get the second part, what we're doing proactively. First part was which? What was the first part of your question again? I'm sorry. Uh, the, um, could they have originated in Florida? Were any of them, um, were any of them sent, how many of them were sent to the mail versus delivered by courier? So I'm not going to get into uh, specifically where we think the packages came from. Um, some were obviously delivered or in the postal system. Uh, I'll leave it at that. Other than that, I'm not going to get into a description of where we think the packages originated. I would reiterate, regardless of where people think they originated, if you see something sus suspicious or you think you may know information, uh, please provide that to us at those two tip lines. Hold on one second. We have a second part of that question. Uh, to get to the second part of your question, uh, when there was the first device uh, targeting uh, Mr. Soros, we went to all the locations that were associated with the Soros family, Soros businesses, um, places that uh, Soros uh, contribute to. Uh, when that uh, developed the next day with uh, the, the bomb at the Clinton residence, then the Obama residence, we really widened our outreach. Uh, we have... Um, a program uh, called the Nexus program. We have the Shield program. So we have a lot of built-in, um, preset uh, public-private outreach that we just uh, turned on and then turned up. Uh, we went to uh, television networks yesterday. We posted uh, police officers in front of locations that we thought might be under increased threat. Uh, when the bomb, uh, when the device was discovered at uh, at CNN. NYPD personnel were already there uh, working with their mailroom people on uh, recognition and detection. And that was um, increased uh, to a wider scope today. I don't want to go through um, what types of people or places uh, we've increased to because we don't want to single anybody out uh, that hasn't received a package. Suffice it to say, we're watching where they go and, um, and we're doing uh, extensive outreach. Just to add one more thing to that, and if you uh, go on the NYPD website, uh, there'll be uh, information about how you can identify what might appear to be a suspicious package. Somebody over here? Yep. Uh, question, you know, there's been a lot of speculation and a lot of talk about whether these are hoax devices, maybe not real in some cases, they weren't intended to, to go off. How would you describe it? Would you describe this as something that was a hoax? Or should people really be taking this seriously? Now, this is something that should be taken seriously. The NYPD and the FBI, we're, we're taking this seriously. We are treating them as, uh, as, as live devices. As you see the way our bomb squad uh, detectives went into CNN yesterday, uh, this, this has to be taken with the utmost seriousness. So uh, as far as a hoax device, we're not treating it that way. Dominic? For the mayor, Mr. Mayor, do you definitely feel this is terrorism related? And what do you say to the people of New York? It's absolutely terrorism because it's an effort to use violence uh, to make a political impact. And that's the definition of terrorism. Uh, the people of New York City uh, are as tough as it gets. Uh, this city's been through uh, terror attacks before. Uh, the people of the city understand the, the whole game plan of terrorists is to intimidate us. Uh, New Yorkers refuse to be intimidated. That's what we see time and time again. Go back to 1993, the first bombing of the World Trade Center, and everything that's happened ever since. Uh, people in this city are full of resolve and don't let these things uh, throw us off our game. And uh, I think that's important to inhibiting uh, terrorism going forward, to consistently show uh, those who would attack us that their efforts are in vain. Uh, so New Yorkers have been exemplary. Uh, they do uh, heed the warning. If you see something, say something. But I want to remind people, because we see this a lot, uh, people should not hesitate. Sometimes someone's you know, looking at something, they're concerned, they think, oh, maybe I should call, maybe I shouldn't. If it's on the cusp, make the call. If you think maybe you should call, you should definitely call. Let the experts uh, resolve something. Let the, if there's anything that's suspicious, let law enforcement be the ones to make sense of it. Colin? I'm just a little confused on uh, the powder. I'm just as a clarification, are you referring to the white powder that was found in this package mailed to CNN, or is this powder that was in the device? No, this is the powder that was found yesterday uh, with, the, uh, with the packaging yesterday. So it's not biological. It's still being uh, subjected to further testing. Yep, right here. Yep. A little bit about the, the officer, the retired officer who found uh, the package at uh, De Niro's property. No, just uh, I'll say that uh, I'd like to thank him uh, for, for doing his job correctly. 
No, he saw on the news, and, and thank you for putting it out there, that this package that he saw yesterday was almost exactly like the package uh, that they were showing on TV, and he took affirmative steps to call us uh, to make sure we could take it away safely. Yes? Is it accurate to call this an explosive device, a suspected explosive device, or simply a device? What's the problem? Uh, I would say it's a suspected explosive device. Yep. Do you have any sense of the bomb exploded? Do you believe the intent is to have them not explode, or are they? Yeah, I'm not. Uh, I'm not going to talk about intent. But uh, you know, if you were the bomb squad detective, how would you treat it? Right? Okay. In the back row. Commissioner, I understand you don't want to say whether these things are explosive or not. But do you guys know for for yourselves whether these are explosive or hoaxes? We are. We are treating them as suspected explosive devices. You yeah. Even if you don't want to I'm not going to get into that. The back row. It was a good try, though. Thank you. Are all the devices that were inside the same? And did you guys been able to get forensic evidence off the envelopes or things to get identifying information? Bill, do you want to take that? So I'm not going to describe whether devices are the same or not. What I will tell you is the folks at the lab at Quantico are extraordinarily thorough, and everyone will be examined in great detail, uh, and we'll go from there. Guys, Mark, hold on. Mark. With these devices, does this look like they're constructed by somebody who actually knows what they're doing or just somebody who just read about the website? I think you just asked me the same question that he asked me. I'm not going to go into that. Thanks. Yep, right here, the front row. Is there a time frame as to when the analysis from Quantico may be rendered for the FBI to continue the investigation? It's, it's an ongoing thing. Uh, we are discovering things by the hour. Shimon? Yeah, get to you in a second. Dean. Maybe someone can talk about how the postal inspectors, how they're going about tracking this, finding this. Um, sure. There's been a lot of questions on it. I think a lot, a lot of people have. Okay. All right, Shimon. Uh, Phil, you want to talk about that? So, in terms of tracking, we have uh, over 600,000 postal employees out there right now, so we have their eyes and ears looking for these packages. I will say, uh, in the postal network, we have found nothing in the last eight hours. So, um, what we have so far is what we have 10, 10 parcels. If, if anything at all, in terms of how significant is that that you haven't found anything else? Or it's not really significant, although, again, it's working. We've, we've got our eyes and ears of the postal employees, highly trained postal inspectors out there uh, searching uh, postal facilities, looking for these devices. And again, we haven't found anything in the last eight hours. Have you been able to determine where these uh, packages were mailed from? Or without, you don't have to give us a location, but has there been a significant amount of work done? Not at this time. No. Nope. Right. Okay, Dean, last one. You've been asking people to call 188-NYC-SAFE and the National Hotline. Have people been calling those hotlines with information, and do you have leads? Yeah, so uh, as John said, our 1888-New York City SAFE hotline, we have 139% uh, more calls uh, as of yesterday. So people are calling. And am I going to speak about specifically what those leads are? Uh, I'm not going to do that because we're still in the middle of the investigation. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for being here. Thanks.